Well, welcome. You're at the right place to learn about how to deal with abusive customers. Now, at the end of this video, this profit killing job shop pricing mistake number five video, we're going to explain what you can do to manage your relationship with abusive customers and how to stop letting them control your business. Now, I'm Bo Gaines, the throughput accounting guru, and I have with me here Brad Stellan, the inventor of the velocity pricing system. So welcome to the Science of Business channel, where we use the theory of constraints and throughput accounting to increase your bottom line. This is also the home of the Velocity Pricing System, which you can find at www.velocitypricingsystem.com. So let's dig in. So pricing mistake number five, working with abusive customers. Well, some customers can go beyond challenging and actually become abusive. An abusive customer is one that dictates owner's requirements to you. They are extremely demanding and unrelenting. They do not appreciate your hard work. And by appreciate, we mean pay for. Uh, they believe they can set their own prices, terms, and conditions with you. And they may force you to expose your books, records, and other private information, in addition to exerting undue influence and control over your company and its operations. And uh, you know, Brad, when we first started working together, uh, I had the same experience that a lot of our clients have had. And just hearing the term abusive customer, it really resonates. It's like, oh, oh, that's a concept. Yeah, okay, that make, they are abusive, aren't they? That's exactly what these people are. And so I think, you know, the concept that you've developed here and have named uh, that being an abusive customer is a really powerful concept once you kind of uh, internalize it and make sense of it. Well, going all the way back to the total quality management days, you know, customer is king. Um, you know, do what whatever you need to do to please the customer. I think we find that as kind of a starting condition with a lot of the people we work with. But it it can go overboard, particularly when your customer has a lot of power over you, and you know they they they're going to leverage that. They're going to leverage that for you to be their bank. Uh, to extend terms, to lower prices where you don't have any money, uh, you don't make any money on the job. Uh, and so there's a, there's a place where a good customer becomes an abusive customer. And that's what we're going to try to d define here today. Yeah, exactly. So this is what an abusive customer is. What do you do if you have one? And, uh, uh, it's it's not uncommon. I mean, it's uh, I would say Brad is probably a facet of almost every one of our clients as a starting condition is that they have an abusive customer. So what can we do with them? Well, in dealing with abusive customers, well, ideally you wouldn't tolerate abusive customers nor their. <laughs> the best way to deal with an abusive customer is to position yourself so that you are not beholden to their demands. Now, in fact, what we would suggest, uh, and this is Brad's suggestion here is that you give an abusive customer to your competitor. <laughs> That's kind of a funny one there, Brad. I would not have, you know, my mentality would be keep all your customers and keep them all happy all the time. But here we're saying give the abusive customers to the competition. Well, if you realize the extent to which one bad customer can muck things up for you, imagine what they could do for your competitor. And so it's it's a sleight of hand to be able to move them, move them away to somebody else. but uh, could be the best thing you do. I guess the other thing I'd say about the, the term abusive customers, it, it seems to be empowering to people to be able to name the fact that you know, this these characteristics are abusive and they can do something about it. They don't need to endure it. And when they do something about it, they feel really good about themselves. So that's the, the common uh, effect that we see with people we work with. Yep. Yeah, it's really empowering to have this concept named and then begin to manage to it and around and through it. Um, so in addition to giving your abusive customers to the competition, here are a few other suggestions of things that you might can do along the way. Well, the first one here is to disagree on price rather than service. And so instead of just saying, you know what, we're not going to do, uh, you know, we're no longer going to work with this customer anymore and pull and revoke your services from them, a better approach that we've seen play out over time is to simply have higher and higher prices uh, to the point where they you know, basically turn down the work, but, and they may not like that. But however, when you disagree on price versus service, 
it tends to be that the relationship is preserved into the future rather than if you pull service, it kind of burns the bridge um, almost permanently in many cases. Uh, and that's, that's somewhat counterintuitive, but that's been my experience. So yes, that, it's not that they won't be mad if let's say you double prices and as uh, soon as they can, they'll move the business away. But then later on, they'll realize, hey, you were actually a pretty good supplier. So they come back hat in hand and now it's more of an equal relationship. Yep. Um, number two there is stop allowing the abusive customer to see your books and or financial information. Uh, you know, guys, this is your private business. This, These are your books, your financial information. Now, it may be common practice. It may be thought of as industry practice. But um, despite that, I mean, you know, that's the old adage. Just because everyone else is doing it doesn't mean you have to. Um, I would be very reluctant, if ever, to share my financial information with a customer. But, but it's true that in some industries, this is common practice. So changing the rules or not doing that, it, that's, it's no small task. Uh, it's a big obstacle to overcome. But once you allow somebody to see your books and they get to pick and choose what they decide that they're willing to pay for, you know the price is going down. Yep. Three is stop allowing your abusive customers to jerk around the schedule unless they're paying uh, premiums to do so. And a lot of times people are blaming themselves for being late. And yes, you might've been late on the job, but it also might be true too that the abusive customer changed their mind 13 times between placing the order and you actually fulfilling the order. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, you're here to run your business, you control your schedule, and the abusive customer does not. And then four, stop allowing the abusive customers to get away with not honoring your terms and conditions. So a classic thing is this, um, you're one day late because they changed their mind, and changed the quantity and changed everything about the order, and you get a screaming, raving phone call because you were one day late. All right, fine. Well, on the back end, you send out the invoice, and at day 67, on 45-day terms, let's say, you give them a call and say, hey, Mr. Customer, you know we're on 45-day terms. It's day 67. Uh, how about I get a payment? Oh, well, we'll have to look in through our file. We'll have to see if we received your invoice on time. Uh, we'll see what we can do. We, we'll need about another week, week and a half to get to that, okay? Thanks. Well, wait a minute. If you're going to call me raving, screaming, upset because I'm one day late on parts, we can't play by double standards. If we're going to say that we need parts delivered on time, and that's what we strive to do, then you need to be paying on time, okay? And so the point here is this. There's a two-way street. They have the expectation that you deliver parts on time, as you should be delivering them on time. And the two-way street here is we have the expectation that they're going to be paying on time. And if that's not the case, if they're if you're delivering on time, and they're not abiding by the terms and conditions that you set forth, well then that's a problem. And so you've got to enforce your terms and conditions and stop allowing them to take advantage of you and for you to be their bank. But this is a big game that's gone on now for 20 or more years where uh, people are stretching payables. They, they feel really good about doing that, making you their bank and uh, not honoring terms and conditions. To me, it's unethical. You have 30 day terms, you got 30 day terms. It's, that doesn't mean that you get to stretch them to 90 if you can get away with it. Uh, so th this is something that is commonplace though. And if you're gonna do something about it, to your point, you're, you're gonna have to draw the line and make it a, a real issue. Yep. I've had numerous of those discussions. They're always fun. What do you mean I got to pay on time? And if I don't, I don't get parts. Well, <laughs> believe it or not, George, that's how the world works. So anyway, so really all these four, I would say are surmised here in this last sentence, but stop allowing the abusive customers to run your business. And you've got to set firm boundaries from pricing through terms and conditions to showing information to managing the schedule. You've got to have very firm boundaries. And all the while doing this, you need to ensure that this abusive customer, that they are paying handsomely for your valuable time. And so guys, um, you know, it's not that you can pull full stop and just 
fire the abusive customer, although you certainly could, that tends to not be the best direction to head in. It tends to be some form of working with them, managing through the situation, raising prices, all the while establishing these boundaries. And that tends to be, I guess, you know, uh, Brad, the solution that we see work out. And it's not easy. It doesn't always work out well. But um, in the long run, I can't tell you how how much better off our clients have been when they get rid of or better manage that abusive customer they have. I don't know that we've talked about this a lot, but you know, once you've let them get away with it, let's say that they're at 120 days and they're your biggest customer. Well, now they pretty much own you. If if you had to write that off, you might be out of business. So, and, and you know, your hand to mouth, hand to mouth, hand to mouth. Uh, that that's just an unacceptable place to to get to. So before it gets anywhere close to that, set your boundaries. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And, and the boundaries, I think, Brad, should be set uh, such that they give you a warning versus you know, all of a sudden we have a problem. So just in my world of AR, I would call people uh, at day 20 and say, hey, Brad, uh, by the way, you're going to be making that payment in 10 days, aren't you? Ding, ding, yep. ding. I better hear a yes or we're going to have a problem. So, yep. you know, that was how I managed that on the controllership side. Um, so, yeah, I mean, get these boundaries in place, set them at the appropriate point, and then enforce them. That's the other side of it all. So, well, guys, this is our pricing mistake number five, abusive customers. Uh, we hope that you found this helpful. I know it's been helpful for me just in thinking about dealing with customers and how to have an appropriate relationship with boundaries. But if you want to learn more about how we can help you to substantially increase your net profit and your bottom line, head on over to www.velocitypricingsystem.com where you can learn more and then request a strategy session from us. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.